Hello everyone, my name is Ray, thank you for visiting my channel, please don't forget to subscribe. What you see here, yeah, I know, it's pretty awesome. It's a lathe that I built from the stuff that I already had in the shop, stuff that was in boxes, stuff that I forgot I even had. Put together a lathe, it's almost there, we're about halfway, We've got to finish a few things. If you haven't seen part one and two of my videos, there'll be a link to those in the upper right, don't miss them, they really cover how this got started. Guess what? We've got a live center on a homemade lathe made from spare parts that were lying around La live center look at that a bicycle wheel hub live center unbelievable we got to finish this up today i got to make a center for it um i got a couple of ideas we got to go looking for some parts and you'll see that in a second and um we've got to figure out how to tie this thing down um we need to find some handles handles guess what like my box of pulleys i have a box of nothing but handles. So, we'll get started. Old router handles, drill handles, angle grinder handles, more router handles, broken handles, knobs. That's that's a promising knob. Check out these knobs. Well, I'll find something in here, but let's get started. Let's get started by finishing the center on this tailstock. For the center we need to find a bolt. I happen to know that this is clearance for a 3 8 bolt. Um, 10 millimeter will also work. So we need to find a bolt to go through here. Uh, 3 inches, I don't think I'll have anything like that, but if we get lucky there might be some threaded rod somewhere in here. So let's go to the time lapse and see what we can find. Okay, so here's where we are. Uh, I know that the axle that goes through this hub is 3 eighths of, three eighths of an inch. I've got one, actually I have a couple of these, but I found one that would fit a 3 eighths millimeter screw, but if you look close, or bolt I should say, it's too sloppy. I don't like that much play. Um, it might cause us a little trouble turning later. So um, I also had a little piece of 10 millimeter threaded rod. I went ahead and Clean. You can see how rusty this has been sitting around a while. Cleaned up the ends uh, on the stone. And you can see that this actually sits in here much better. It's not perfect, but it's better. But guess what? Since I've got a little bit of everything, I've got this stuff called Shimana Can. If you enjoy the 60s, 70s styling of this product, uh, that's for good reason. Uh, it's five thousandths of an inch thick. And I, I cut a few strips. And I took those strips and I rolled them into a, uh, I rolled them into a cylinder. So when, whenever you do this kind of thing, you always want to make sure that when you roll that cylinder, that the ends do not overlap. There's a, there's a small gap here between the ends. I'm not sure if the camera's picking that up. I'll, I'll put a, make a close-up of that in a minute. Okay, here you see that aluminum sleeve up close. Uh, you can see that it was actually from flat and I, I rolled it up. The way I rolled it up is just put it on this rod and I wrapped it around there. So you can see when I have this threaded rod in here and you can see that if I pinch it all the way down, get it tight, 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 you can probably make out that it's still got a gap in there. So that's very important. You don't want that to overlap. Uh, so if the ends overlap, what's going to happen is it's, it's going to be twice as thick at that point and it's going to hold it off center. So you always want to make sure you, you don't overlap the ends. They can be close, but as long as they don't overlap. So I'll take this, I'm going to put one in this side, put one right in there, and I'm going to take the other one, and I'm going to put it in on this side. Okay? I could actually make one, but uh, this was easier to do. Then, put my threaded rod in, my tiny threaded rod, and look at this. Hardly any play at all. In fact, my measurements say that there is about an extra five thousandths of play in there, which is perfect because we could use that to advance the center. Uh, something this thin, I'm only going to let it move about an inch. All right, so what I think we're going to do next is chuck this up. I'm going to spin this in the drill, 
hit it on the stone and make, make a point. Let's take a look at that. Okay, this is my rotary tool station. If you like it, I have a video on it. I don't have a big shop, so I gotta have some space. And I have all kinds of tool storage inside. But we are going to do this right now. Here we have it. I'm gonna spin it in the drill so you can see how. That's pretty nice. That's nice and center. I know the uh, focus isn't picking up right now. Well, here it is. We got a center in there. That is going to be just absolutely great. Got nuts on both sides. And I have just enough length here that I can possibly put a handle on it. But being that it's only 10 millimeters thick, I don't think I want it sticking out too much further than that. So um, I'll just have the handle just to advance it from zero to about an inch. I wouldn't want it going any further than that. But that is not a bad center. I mean, that is. A live center? Think about a live center! That's awesome! Alright, I'll show you what I've been doing. I've been using the radial arm to plunge a groove down this board. I'm going to cut two grooves and then drill the ends and take out that little piece of wood. So it'll basically be splitting this board into two ways. Uh, left about uh, four inches on the end so I can keep it intact and of course we have all that down there What I found in my my box of handles is a great little offset handle So I'm going to use that for tightening and loosening my tailstock I hope I think it'll work and so if it doesn't work for my tailstock it will definitely work for the tool rest uh, But it sticks a little high for that. So uh, I also have a half inch bolt left over from uh, doing my big blue lathe down there uh, this one was a little too short, so uh, it's going to finally get get uh, some life, get, get to do something. All right, so let's get back to it. There we are, two slots cut right down the center, nice and precisely. I did it at nine sixteenths. The bolt's half inch, so I'll have a one sixteenth inch of clearance. I just have to drill a hole here and finish this up, and uh, I'll drill a hole there and finish that up. So. We're going to see this put together pretty soon. All we will need is to um, is to uh, get the tool rest and attach the motor. And we will have a running lathe. Look at that. Nice and straight. That's the most critical part. Let's take a good look at that. Nice and straight. That's what I like. Okay. So, the bolt, you can see, will go the other way, obviously, from the bottom up. But it goes right through there, no binding, everything is nice and smooth. Now all we have to do is mount the tailstock. So I'm going to mark where that is, so we know where that slot, where that hole has to be drilled. I'll have to take this center back out. But we will mark that and then uh, see how she clamps. And I still have to make up a nut, but that shouldn't take too long. Coming through, as you can, as you notice, I took the headstock off to make my to make my life a little easier cutting that groove, but I'll put it back on. So I decided to check how true 
my homemade tailstock center, you can see right here, uh, with my 10 millimeter threaded uh, all, uh, threaded rod. You see, I've got the uh, I've got this indicator set to zero, right about there. Got it set to zero, and uh, it's actually just a little bit. It's about one thousandths off of zero. So, if I rotate this, you'll see that we'll get to right there, right about ten thousandths of an inch. So that means that this is off by ten thousandths of an inch. And if you, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with that unit of measurement. That is 0 .010 inches, so uh, quite an insignificant amount when you consider this is a homemade lathe, a homemade lathe with a bicycle hub and a piece of thread rod sharpened uh, with a drill and a, and a grinder. Nothing fancy, nothing special, and I'm within ten thousandths. I will take that all day long. So let's uh, let's mount this tailstock and see how far we can get tonight. Okay, one of the things we need to do is. Uh, think about our spur drive. I gotta drive this thing from the headstock somehow. So I was thinking about that. So this is what I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this carriage bolt, I'm gonna cut it off, and I'm going to use a wing nut. I'm gonna grind this wing nut flat, put two edges on it, and I'm going to spin grind the point of this threaded portion into a point so I can have a spur drive, homemade spur drive to fit in our lathe chuck. Alright, let's go take a look at that. Well, as you saw, I started with a carriage bolt, much like this one. I cut it out over the middle right there, cut both ends off. Went ahead and ground the tip, you saw that. I also took a wing nut, ground the ends off square, as far as, as square as I could, and put a bevel on there. You can see the bevel on both sides. Um, if you do this, make sure you put it on the correct side, just, just a little uh, advanced. Uh, heads up there. So I'm going to put this together. There you go. I'm using a washer just in case because I made the part long. Uh, so in the event that it's a little bit uh, that needs adjustment, I have room for adjustment. I'm going to put in the headstock. The headstock is loose right now because I'm still working on the base. And I'm going to tighten this up. And there you have a homemade two prong let's take a closer look a homemade two prong spur drive now this is a small lathe so I'm not gonna do anything super huge so I think this is this is more will be more than adequate for what I have to do now I might have to adjust this length here um, which I can do I can always take a little bit more off but for for starters this is this will get us going for starters very well, we have made some pretty good progress today. We've got the the uh, center slot cut, so it allowed me to bolt all my accessories, tailstock, tool rest. And if I didn't mention it before, uh, you can see I have some runners under this tailstock right here, both sides. The reason is this this is a, a board, you know, it's just a standard board. I don't have a planer, and it has a little cup in it. So I created, I uh, put these two little runners so the hump of the board wouldn't affect the the tailstock. Um, we got the the tailstock live center. Right now it's a little it's loose. I don't have it tightened. You can see it's loose there. Uh, but it's a lot, nice live center. We ground that tip. We have the two prong spur drive for the headstock. You can see that very nice. Didn't cost a penny. I already had these parts in in here. And um, the tailstock is mounted and ready. One of the things I realized is because of the head of the bolts. You can see right here. And I'm going to have one for the for the tool rest as well. Uh, I need to raise this bed. This bed has to be elevated. It's too low, uh, so to sit on a workbench. So I'm going to have to raise it. And luckily, I have a piece of two x four. I think I'll use for that. And we have to make a, a tool rest and mount the motor and take the belt off the the drill press. And uh, right now, this is loose. We'll just tighten that back down. 
and we'd be able to start running on this. So I'm very excited. Uh, so far, zero cost, and uh, it's, I'm, I'm surprised that we could we were able to put this together. As always, please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. And I do read the comments, so please don't not, uh, do not hesitate to uh, put anything in the comments or ask any questions you like, any suggestions. Uh, I do read them, and I will respond uh, when I have a chance, and uh, I will respond accordingly. Thank you very much, 